Sunday painting session. So uh, my name's Tom, this is The Bunker. Welcome if you've never seen us before. Um, this is a live, uncut, unedited series I do. It's part of a relaxation program on a Sunday morning whereby I use my love and my hobby to relax. And uh, I've been painting and sharing that with some people out there. So if you do see us or you're watching a rerun, welcome. Do consider pressing the sub button. Uh, we're, we're going to 1800 subs, which is amazing. And uh, here we are. So last episode, I worked on my Legion Crater for my Sons of Horus for 30k. And we left him where we'd washed him with an army painter dark tone. So what I'm going to be doing today is just a few of the highlights. Now normally on the Marines, I can take one of my Marines, I let the wash and then a varnish do the work, essentially. Um, but because he's the Praetor and he's badass, we'll be doing a little bit of extra work. So let's start with some highlights. I think we'll do the metals first. <clears throat> ah, there we go. A bit of, bit of gore juice known as tea. <laughs> so we used our brassy brass colour uh, to do the brass works on there. So we'll start with a bit of that. My palette, just a tiny bit, we don't need a great deal. And we'll have some chainmail silver from. It's a glorious day today. In the car! <laughs> in the UK and uh, we're excited to have a, a lovely rest of our day but we'll start by doing a bit of highlighting so what I'm doing I'm just going to go over the edges with the original colour just in the points I really want it to pop um, again not something I do with the marines Primarily because they don't have this much trim, which is fine. And but he is the Legion Praetor, so we make him look a bit snazzy. So it's interesting. Um, I'm really enjoying painting the 30k. I've not played the game yet, <laughs> so we're trying to get to a thousand points, which is. Is approaching. It's approaching. Um, after this guy, I've got another tactical squad I need to paint up, and then we're we're, we're getting close to that one K mark where I can give uh, Pete and James a game, which is is what I'm really looking forward to to actually learn the game. So. Like I said, so the feedback on the the previous one, guys, was fantastic. Thanks ever so much. Um, it was really nice to talk to people <clears throat> and be able to share a bit of hobby, hobby love on a Sunday. And it's, like I said, so I have quite a stressful job. I've actually been on holiday this week, so I don't really have any stress at the moment. Um, but I have quite a stressful job, um, as we do with life and so on and so forth. So the hobby is what keeps me sane, for want of a better word. Not seeing when my missus finds out how much money I spend on it, but you know, you know what I mean. Right, so around the top here, we did the inside there, didn't we? We did it as if it was the red sort of cloak velvet material. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is get a really minute brush. <clears throat> so top here, <clears throat> excuse me. So the top here, um, we're just gonna start to pick this out as well. Um, it's actually there, so I don't want to overdo this. Uh, um, look at the back. Also has the sort of aspects where we had to do a bit of a repair job. So I'm just gonna build that up there, and the 
is uh, space dot white cat sub speak. There we go. Now, the next thing that we're going to do to highlight this gold is use the silver <coughs> and highlighting a brass or a gold or anything like that. If you use a silver water, there we go. Get the paint flowing. <laughs> it's so hot today. We're going to essentially pick out, so this area here, for example, if I just put a really sharp highlight of silver on there, it just makes it look like it's shining. It just makes it pop. And I'm thinking here, where the light would catch. Top of the eagle. Yeah, top of these things, these the eyes, are they the eyes? I think they're the eyes, aren't they? Top of that there. Yeah, I'm just kind of making it pop, so to speak. There it is. If we catch a reflection on there, top there, these eyes here. The axe, so the light catch, catches there. Yeah, across the top. And it just, I don't know, it just gives another dimension to your sort of deeper metallic colours, I guess. It just makes it come to life. Around this side here, we can use the side of the brush. Here. Just go around and build it up. And giving a bit of time and build up, it sort of creates that highlighted gold effect, which is pretty cool. So obviously on the silver as well, we can just go across the top and highlight that. Just to pick it out, make it pop, just breathe the mask. Got some ample time anyway that we've made a little error. We now get to cover up. <laughs> top of his little pistol thing there. Yeah, let's just sort of go around just making it pop basically. Um, Chainmail is slightly different, we'll handle that in a second. He has a, a rack of skulls and whatnot on the back. Um, it's about pack, so we're just going to go. I'm going the extra mile here because he's obviously his character. You see what I mean? His character, it's. There we go, by no means. Am I going to be winning Golden Demon or anything like that? Um, but it's nice to have a nicely painted Warlord on the field. There we go. And his axe blade. So, what I'm going to do with the axe blade is quite easy, really. I'm just going to see so he has a line here. Which I'm just going to go on there and highlight away from it. around these little marks. Keep the paint moving, there we go. And the other edge of the blade. And build that up slightly into the middle. And there, there we go. That gives us like a highlighted blade effect. The underside, don't need to worry as much, do we? No. So I'm just gonna go up there, up that side, slightly connect it, a few brush strokes, go from there, there we go. On the edge. So, <clears throat> that's the metallics pretty much there, I think. I think, guys, what do you think? Yeah. Apart from his chain mail. So, let's wash the brush. And to our trusty <laughs> knacker of the dry brush. Here 
Just dock a little bit, there we go. You can also now just pick out some really soft, finer highlights on edges of his armour that might be chipped. Paint does it work for you. There we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> so that's the metallic sort of highlight to the stage because the don't forget when we put our matte varnish on it it's going to dull it down quite a lot um which is you know absolutely absolutely fine it's, it's what it's supposed to do so what we're going to do now is just touch on his face so um, <clears throat> original skin color <laughs> there we go which is cadian flesh tone by citadel Palette. It's exactly the same process as the guy. So like the, we've added all the shades and we're just gonna go in now. Across the top and add in. Mm -hmm. Now luckily because it's so hot today, I'll dry quite quickly. <laughs> Tiny bit of wine, and it's anyway. I like white, white though. I don't like these off whites. Um, tiny bit on the palette. Use that as our shading highlighting color. So we're just gonna blend it in a little bit. There we go. I want it to look quite pale. I think the more evil they are, the paler they are. I, I don't know. I don't know. So nice little point. do when that's thoroughly dry we'll give it a really watered down wash just to add a little bit of definition in there but then that's done black is another color so obviously we've got black on the miniature which is great so and it might seem really obvious guys but we're going to put black next to white and we're going to use a white to create a gray to do a bit of highlighting with so there's my black on the palette And all these techniques are what I've used across my entire army so far. The process is the same. It truly is. Just making an off-black sort of grey mix there. There we go. And I'm just going to come in here. Give him some a bit of body on this, this hair. It doesn't have to be a lot. I don't want to go crazy because I like the sort of realism aspect. I'm not really going to touch this pad at all with that. I'm going to touch the handle of the axe. The beds are out. <laughs> and the back of the clay. Clake? The cloak is just going to. Just the areas where the wash is helping us here, you see. So these areas here, just where it would be. A little bit more. Highlight a bit more to it. Again, it allows us just to retouch anywhere where we've had overspill on anything. And there we go. And we've got a pipe or a tube there. And I'll just let the brush over it. Just a couple of passes. And the rest of it is browns, which we're going to leave because the, the actual varnish will do the work there. What I am going to do, I'm going to mix some more white in now. May continue with our transition. There we go. Now this could be dead easy. I'm going to do okay over what I've just done. So here now, I'm just going to really gently, gently touch that. And just let the pick out the odd hair. Down here, I'm going to go in one direction, just a few lines, blah, 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 there you go. The cloak really doesn't want a great deal of this on it. So I'm just going to 
down this edge. There we go. Then here. You can just side of the brush there, guys, if you want to. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so let's go back. Now that we're actually finished with this, what I'm going to do as well, I'm just going to just going to randomly sort of dab it over the base material. I'm going to go a little bit lighter there as well, uh, and I'm just going to create the effect that you saw on rubble using that. But he's on rubble on the miniature, uh, but obviously I want the the paint to reflect that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so what we might do is use that colour and just really tickle that, just to make it pop. There you go. So now we're getting somewhere. I'm just going to have a quick uh, intake of tea <laughs> and then we'll come back and wash his face, which is quite interesting. So let's have a think about the wash that we want to use. Now, juice of life. <laughs> now, there's a few sort of theories behind skin and so on and so forth, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some contrast gullum and flesh. Shake it, shake it, shake it. I'm going to put some on my palette. The tiniest amount, really, guys. Don't really want you. I'm going to add some. Contrast medium. Next to it. Thin it down. And because he's evil, I'm going to add a dot of purple. I'm just going to use a bit of zero. Zerius purple? And I, I, I only want this to really be a tickle. A real tickle. There we go. And I'm going to just daub into the recesses. There we are. Makes you look a bit strained. <laughs> now that's a top tip as well. So if you haven't, say if you haven't had anything, I don't know, necromunda, they have lots of it stuck in the bodies, don't they, and stuff like that, or like a serpentic arm or something like that. That red and sort of purpley sort of agitated skin look that you get works really round, well around implants and stuff like that. And it's good for sort of like being like baddies and things like that. They they look better like that. And I say baddie and it's, it's all relative, isn't it? <laughs> Let's touch his straps. Oof. So, now I use the original contrasts that I used. This is the brown. Um, I use that as a base for a highlight. And this is dead easy. I'm going to use Rakar Flesh and I'm just going to mix it into it. So we've gone a little bit too heavy there. So let's get a little bit more brown contrast. And just mix it together. And it creates an instant highlight colour. And we're going to go straight in. Whoop. And it doesn't really need thinning down, you see, because contrast is a thinner paint anyway. And there, there we go. And I'm going to go down from the top. There we go. And around there. So he's getting there. He's getting there. And this is obviously, you know, we we put the extra work in when it's a character. Because this is, if, if I always see it, if you're playing and you've got an army, bit different maybe with 30k because somebody might come along and go oh let's have a look at this spartan <laughs> oh, let's have a look at that massive battle tank that you've got um fair enough most game systems they'll go oh is that your character let's have a look do you know what i mean and that's where you do a bit more work on them um so like the faces and such like on the marines i've still done them but they're a bit more basic um just because they're they go chap for want of a better word um so we're getting there that contrast on his face has really settled well um, into creating a I'm an evil warlord look. Wow, I should tell that. A bottle and tell that. I'm an evil warlord. 
I haven't even warlord by the bunker. And what we're going to do now, Volkite weapons have like this power pack thing. Um, I'm not 100% on Volkite, what it should be. Um, so I'm just going to use a bit of Tesseract Glow on it. Now, obviously, my Tesseract Glow is separated, so I'm going to have to. Ooh, <laughs> killed him. My Tesseract Glow is separated, so I'm going to have to shake that guy's glow with. I don't know what, well, we'll discuss something else. Um, how is everybody? I hope everyone's well. And I hope that you're working on projects today. It's Sunday, it's lovely, it's a, a glorious day, and it's time for a bit of hobby relaxation, eh? Um, let's get in there, shake, shake, shake. <laughs> now, I'm doing this now, um, because obviously the matte varnish is going to seal everything in, so that you're let a bit less glowy. Although you can quite happily have a glow <laughs> in 30k. It's 30k. Um, it's what I need a vortex mixer, isn't it? Like a little... Shake it like a madman. There we go. Bit of tesseract glow, and I'm literally just gonna get the recesses of the gun. Now, I don't really know what this gun is, it just looks badass, so I just think it's gonna probably have a glow to it. There we go. Um, let's move on to a bit of the red. So, our red, we used Flesh Terrors contrast paint. Now, you can't obviously add white to red because it'll just make pink. So, I do have some other reds. Um, Mephiston red. And I think I've actually got corn red. Yeah, so, but I think Mephiston red is the one that we're going to use for the highlights. And give it a shake because it's a bit old, this paint. There we go. Oh, it's very old. <laughs> so, we can rescue some. Oh, there we go. I need to have a water, wash brush off. I need to repl replace quite a lot of paint. I can paint like a madman. Uh, but I think I'm going to try the. Um, I can't remember what they're called now. What are they called? Pro Acryl. I think I think I fancy trying Pro Acryl. The Acryl. Um, they seem like a really cool paint that doesn't lose its pigmentation. When you water it down, which is kind of exactly what I'm looking for. Um, same principle here, guys. I'm just picking out the bits. The dots to offer a reflection. Offer some kind of reflection. There we go. Yeah. We've got there. I don't know what these are. I don't know. What would they be? Rubies? Surely not. It's not the car that's blinked to battle with him, is it? Don't know. <laughs> okay, and obviously now we have the cloak to do, so I'm just going to see how it's run out a little bit. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a little bit of brown contrast into that. Um, all will become clear, I promise, because it'll just matte it a little bit. There we go. It's going to matte it, but it still makes it a highlight colour. And then I'm literally just going to go. Oh. And that's fine there. Now all I'm doing is I'm literally picking out areas where I think the white would fall. Um, there, in there, we'll just have it follow on. And it's not a overly difficult process. You see, when my light's going to start running out there. You see what I mean? So, like, the light's not going to get through the back of the globe. So, I'm going to leave that darker in there. Keep building pigment here. On the top. And then down that way. Other side. Yes, yeah, exactly the same principle. Don't be afraid to do this in more than one coat. 
the squirrels here. We need to give him a name, don't we? He's on the roof of the, the bunker. <laughs> yeah, that should be a contest. Patreons can name the bunker mascot, which is a squirrel. Oh, it should be a barking dog, to be fair. Okay, so I'm just going to go one last pass here. There we go. It's a subtle highlight on the cloak. It doesn't do a massive amount of damage to anything, so to speak. Obviously, there's an internal line there. We'll approach that at a later point. Um, but we're getting there. We're absolutely getting there. So let's have a look at the skulls and such like. So the skulls, we base them with Rakar Flesh. Now, Rakar Flesh, I love this colour. Um, I think it's one of the best colour schemes I've ever, ever made. And, you know, you can hold me to that. So what we need to do, first of all, dead easy, take our Rakar Flesh and put some on the top. Mix it in a little bit. There we go. And take a tiny dab of water. Hit the flow. And then we're just going to come down from the top on the skulls. And the first couple of passes can be a bit more difficult to get the colour all there. Um, Dark's one's incredible, but it can be quite shiny, uh, which is why you really hit it with matte varnish. I mean, you should manage varnishing models anyway. Um, if you've put all the effort into painting, you know, lots of, lots of varnish there, so to speak. There we go, we're getting there. He doesn't add that many schools on him for games of shop models, to be fair. Uh, Heresy in there. The player base wouldn't stand it. <laughs> there we go. We're getting there. And with all of the things, we just keep building it up. Keep building the pigment up. Top down. There we go. So what I'm going to do now, I need a dab of white, which we're just going to mix into that Rakar Flash. It's going to be really easy, and that will give us our highlight there. And this is the, the this is the approach I take to highlighting everything. Um, <laughs> shade it down, add white, bring it back up slightly. Uh, way too light. And you can do this effect quite quickly as well. Um, there we go. So, for example, if you were doing terrain, so there's a good example of some terrain. So that's a bit of. Uh, sort of fantasy-esque terrain um objection marker exactly the same principle on that racker dry brush wash done dead easy and it just it just just works and it's a quick effect that you can get so from the top down again obviously the, the dome of the edge is going to be yeah and a bit on the bottom yeah there we go quick and easy scores So I don't know if anybody out there that's watching now or is watching this re rerun, so to speak, rerun, <laughs> um, has any tips on what I should be taking in a thousand points onto Horus Army um, painted. I have got a Contemptor, a Spartan, a Rhino, 10-man tactical squad, and soon to be my Praetor. Obviously, I need another tactical squad. Um, and I'm going to continue just, just painting and painting and painting, basically. But the idea... Is that I can actually get a thousand pound game and start to learn the system, <laughs> which would be nice, eh? So I'm just going in there from the top, just to the head. Just work your way down with your highlights. And just join them up the caps, I say. Here we go, scores done. <laughs> Dead easy, and he stands out. That's it. Okay. So we are getting to a stage 
where we can start to heresyify him. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> um, we need to do the entire trim, don't we, of his cloak. Um, which is perfectly fine and we're just going to continue to use our gold colour I think here guys um, and keep it simple so to speak so I think we may have to come back for more which is perfectly fine I'm going to add a bit of you know, my, my planted flow aid which is water um, to it there we go And I'm going to use a small brush. And start picking out the trim. It's a glorious day today. Nice to get some hobby in early morning before the sun is too, too dominating, I think. More brush and patience. I'm not going to bother going around the back where you can't see it. If we can't see it, we ain't painting it. As simple as that. There we go. Yeah, he's loosely looking suitably war mastery, isn't he? Is that a word? <laughs> ah, oof, 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 almost missed it. We almost missed it, that boy. There we go. I guess technically you could see that. So they'll line it. So I don't know if anybody out there is going to the LGT. Uh, myself, Jip, Dion, some of the other lads that have featured in, on the channel um, are all attending the LGT. If you're there, it'd be awesome for you just to find me and say hi. I am going to have, hopefully, a branded T-shirt on um, to make me stand out. Or, a bit, or you can just look at the lower boards of the 40K event and I'll be there. Um, <laughs> But it'd be nice to meet some fairly anybody out there. And we might do some live stuff on the LGT, we'll see. There we go. Yeah, he's getting there. So we'll let that dry, which isn't going to take long. And then we're going to come in with some really sort of sharp silver highlights on his cloak. But uh, excuse me while I just have another drink of uh, the juice of life. See, lovely. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, killed him. I don't know if I'm along the right lines with my Marines. Let's have a look. So, that's one of my Marines with a plasma pistol. I love the matte varnish. I love the weathering, which I'm hoping that we can get to, to that today. Um, so, let's, let's, let's power on. And yeah, we'll have a bit of silver up there. The weather because you just get to go mad. Uh, <laughs> that's actually really bad, doesn't it? Oh uh, dear, you just get to go bonk. So the weathering powder. It's also the reason I have my own gaming shed. It's because my missus is just like, you ain't doing that in the house. And 
that's no agreement. She's fine. She's really supportive of the hobby, which is which is good. She gets a relaxed partner. You know, it's kind of like there we go. So that there's enough sculptures to catch. I don't know if it would be gold or if it'd be something else, but it just looks kind of cool. Just to have a little bit of a, a, a nick of a highlight. Um, I, I love the hobby for relaxation and just chilling out, you know. Uh, there we go. And I really enjoyed doing the last video in this series, and I'm enjoying myself today. So I think some days will become a regular thing. I may try and up the camera quality a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. Um, like I say, we are mates that play games, not a professional job. So. I don't think we're getting there. It's cool there. This really is the sort of similar principle from top down. Kind of a little bit heavy there, so not to worry. We just got to nick now. And just gonna have a look at that. Have a look at all that out down there. There we go. Yeah. Got my smashing axe. He is getting there, isn't he? Definitely getting there. So the next stage, realistically, is a bit of weathering. Now, weathering is quite an interesting process. I'm wondering about putting a, tra a, a decal there. Um, hmm. Let's have a look. So obviously he would have the eye decal on his pad, which is perfectly fine. Uh, let's have quick look at what we've got, so, that's a bit too big I think, so that might fit, so maybe, yeah, maybe, we'll maybe approach the decals another day, um, I don't think, mm, it's a bit too dark, it's bad isn't it, so anyway, let's go and, and look at some weathering, so, what we can do, let's get rid of all of our Decent brushes. <laughs> Enter fuzzy old brush. <laughs> and turn our palette. And we're going to approach weathering. Now, the way that you weather, and I kill two birds with one stone here, I have two different types of weathering powder. Now, I have a dark, nice dark one, which burnt umber from Vallejo. And then you have dark red okra. Now, I use dark red okra because my marines are based on Martian bases. This is simple as that. If I wasn't using Martian bases, I wouldn't be using this. Um, so I'm going to come in with the burnt umber first. So I'll give it a little shake. I don't know why. I think it's just because it's like a, a hangover from being a painter. And weathering powder is exactly... It's, it's a powder. Yeah? So... You'll see why I've put it on a towel. <laughs> I'm going to collect some on the brush. And you're going to think, oh my God, what are you doing? Go quite heavy. Okay. He's trudging through the mud. He's trudging through a battlefield. It's 30k. All the bottom of the cloak. Apologies for shaking everything around. Okay. From the bottom up. Don't forget under there. And don't be afraid just to give him a tickle in other places as well. There, for example. Backpack, vents. Yeah. You can brush off and blow off quite a lot. Now, you always go a bit heavier with weathering. Don't be afraid of this. Um, yeah. So it just, it, it does so much for your model. And when we come back and actually varnish this guy, it will make a massive difference. Okay, so I'm just going in there. So obviously I've stepped from the base up. And he is. You've got to think, if you've been trudging through a planetscape for 
on this one. You, you would have a bit of muck on your armour. Okay, so that's quite a heavy weather for now. But what we're going to do now is... See how I went and found her up, so I made the mistake of spilling one of them everywhere once. We're going to hit him with some Colour Forge matte varnish, okay? Now, you need to shake this up, guys. Always follow the rules. Make sure you shake this for a good two minutes. So I'm going to do that whilst having a brew. Feel free to put the kettle on. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. I've got a little pedestal. <laughs> Put him on and spray in my spray room behind me. Um, I don't know. I admire this contempt uh, while while I'm doing it. There we go. Do, 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 we're a distance way of about 30 centimetres. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Here we are. Oh. Do, 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 do. Ah, there we go. He's matte, he's weathered, and the varnish has done an awful lot of work for us there. Yeah? So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to come in with a secondary weathering. And you guessed it. This time, it's dark red ochre. Now, you can daub this on again. Um, it is a lot lighter. Yeah, so that's your dark red ochre it will have more of an impact on the miniature. Um, do you see what I mean? So it's quite a wolf. I'm going heavy on the base, and that'll become self-evident as to why. Yep, so there's that. Cloak. Okay, it's just repeating the same process, really. Daub those powders on. You know, it doesn't matter if you think, oh my God, I've gone really heavy. Oh. Most of it gets blown off, and at the end of the day, it's heresy. It should look like it's weathered off. Yeah? It's really nice effects for weathering powders. Now, I'm entering my less old knacker brush, because yeah, I do just want to get into some of these recesses, but I don't want to put it everywhere. Yeah, I just want to create the idea he's been trudging through a bit. A bit up and hard. There we go. A little bit on here. Back of his. Back of his pan. I think that's enough. And we're going to repeat the process of giving him a varnish. I think I'm just going to give his, 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 his grip a little bit. In there. Yeah, just, it just adds a little something, doesn't it? So let's give him another varnish. Don't make the mistake of forgetting to shake your varnish again, because it will brutalise you if you do not. Um, if you do get clouding, there are lots of things you can do. So this guy clouded when I sprayed him, and I was absolutely gutted. Um, top tip for clouding, could paint him in olive oil and varnish him again. Oh, who'd have thought? Decent distance away again, guys. I'm 
fit in with the mat. Obviously, it will mat your entire colour base down. Uh, which I quite like. Some people don't. Really, is sort of personal choice, really. So, there we go. Yeah. I'm quite happy with that result, how quick it's come out and how badass it looks. So that really is the paint job, apart from the decals. Um, if we're going to put them on, probably not here now, because we've gone quite heavy with weathering powder. He would definitely have something on his shoulder, but I need to just look at what he would actually have. Um, the next thing to do is the base. So, while he's over there. Now, piercing's dead easy. Um, I'm using Geek Gaming Scenic's Face Ready Range. Um, I just find it really, really good. <laughs> oh, we have a, another way of putting it. Um, how I do it, though, I am going to apply a tiny drop of super glue here. And I'm just going to pick out a larger rock, just because I want that rock there. And you don't have to do this. Um, I don't know. I just, just like the little bit more control over it. Um, not really sort of nice and massive. There we go. So I just want those two rocks there. So we'll just let that set slightly. And what we're going to do, we come in really easily. And Geek Game Machine is terrain to fight over fast drying basin glue. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, come on, pal. Really? Um, this stuff's amazing. <laughs> It's as simple, it really is as simple as that. Um, knackered old brush, where art thou? Here we are. Um, just daub it on, yeah. Over the top there a little bit. Down the sides. Yeah. Yeah, I've got it on his legs a little bit. I don't really mind. Um, around the back. Around the back. See, I've got it down the side of the base a little bit as well. I don't mind. Straight in. When that dries, that is a Martian base. So a slight bit of glue still hanging over, back in. You can build it up guys like that. This stuff's slightly pigmented as well. So it pops really well with that red ochre. And that is pretty much our prater done. Um, we're gonna wait for that to dry. <laughs> but yeah, there he is. That's really simple techniques. I mean, he needs that decal or something on that shoulder. I can't decide what color I'm going to do it. Black looks cool, without a doubt, um, but I'll do a bit of research into that. Um, let me know. Let me know what you think. But there you go. Heavily weathered, and you think, oh, my God, what have I done? But then it matches the base. Obviously, that needs to dry thoroughly. So pop him over there. Uh, yeah, keep me in my scenics. Check, check him out, guys. The, the stuff's amazing. It really is. Um, and I've not been paid to say that. <laughs> <laughs> And then it's dead easy, so what we do afterwards, while he's drying, I'll put Prater there, look. Um, I'll just try this, you can oversee. There you go. So he's drying, so we need to leave him to dry. Um, I have a marine squad here. So this is my, one of my first tactical squads. What the, my first tactical squad. There we go. So... I was experimenting with different ways to paint and stuff like that, and the varnish did sort of speckle the bases of these a little bit. Um, so I'll just be going all back over that eventually. Um, all I'm going to do here is black the rims, uh, and that that is literally as easy as it sounds on the tin. Uh, we're going to get some black. standing mat <laughs> that all becomes clear there we go 
and we just go around the edge of the base rim just to just to neaten it up now you don't have to use black obviously guys you can use whatever color you you, you feel like you know um i like black i just feel it adds a, a neatness to the base i don't know it's just a personal preference thing some people might want to go and have a red or a brown around there i like a black simple as so there we go we're getting there where the legion grows so to speak so the more that i had the bigger the army gets the cooler it all feels <laughs> that's the problem we all face <laughs> yeah harris has been sort of been a bit of a labor of love for me because i just love the idea of it all it's a really cool part of law the game and, and to be able to play it is is awesome and eventually we'll get on to some of the forge world stuff but i just want to get all the plastic stuff done first the uh the likes of a bad and, and low can really interest me and obviously the big big man himself big horus i've got the, the the ability to have him because i am obviously doing his legion um, which is cool, he is my prime mark, so yeah, eventually I'll get him. But I like the idea of like tackling things like glaives and you know, like larger vehicles. I just think that's really cool. I don't know, I don't know what to add. I've not played the game yet, to be fair, so you know, I can tell the dreadnoughts, so dreadnoughts are pretty good. <laughs> dreadnoughts, dreadnoughts in this edition, but we'll see. I'm sure I'll get battered by the first few games and I'll uh, have some revenge. Have some revenge. Or not, as it may go. I may just get smashed all the time, which is the often how it goes for me, but there you go. Never know. <laughs> See, obviously on these boys, I, had, I did the decals on the shoulders. I did a video on that, so check when I play this. Um, I've uploaded videos um, how I weather and how I apply the decals and so on and so forth. And it was a bit of a learning process for me as well, that... Um, but it was cool. I uh, really enjoyed it. We're getting there, aren't we? Once they keep getting stuff to really dry, it's like cement. Um, it ain't going anywhere. Which is good, because obviously it's designed for war game tables, isn't it? I bought quite a few bags of it, so I'm like quite tempted to update some of my terrain to match my guys. Um, that's a serious tip for me. So I've got like 40k terrain, which is all this balanced out and mirrored, and that's not really, doesn't really interest me. I like the idea of things being out of sync and cool terrain pieces and stuff like that, so I might have to convert a bit, <laughs> make some new Mars or, I don't know, red planet based ruins and stuff like that, which I think would be pretty cool. Or update the ones I've got, which would be even cooler, right? No, no. We're going from there. We're getting there. <laughs> Maybe, hey, by the time we've done this, we might be able to go around the freight of the base. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I've really enjoyed the Sunday sessions of painting. Get an hour, hour or so of painting before the rest of the mental day happens. <laughs> it's, uh, a relaxing experience obviously this is totally unedited totally totally uncut and with the neighbor's dog as a cameo quite often so i hope you you're enjoying it and we have people watching and stuff like that which is cool and it's nice to just to paint together i guess isn't it now i always get asked uh, reminded by rob um my good friend rob that i should be saying to people we have a patreon <laughs> And uh, if you want to check that out, check the link in the channel description. It's basically a search for Tom's Bunker on Patreon. And you can't go wrong, you can't miss it. It's £2 a month. And we use everything to go back into the channel. So, for example, this month we bought a stabilising kit, or a camera rig, as they're called. And it allows us to get more angles uh, in the game. And it allows us to film easier when we're doing battle reports. So thank you very much for Patreon support for that. And we're aiming, eventually, to get to the stage where we've got an airbrush which would be pretty cool. So check us out if you want to. If you don't want to, that's cool. Just drop us a subscribe and a like, and well, no, it's, it's a love fest. <laughs> it's a love fest either way. There we go. It keeps Rob happy. 
<laughs> How we doing? How we doing, Prater? Let's have a look. I like the fact that that's lift over the base a little bit. Just makes him look even more imposing, doesn't it? There we go. You've also got the ruin in there, and you know, bits pieces. It's covered up with the marshes, sand, but it will be covered up because, let's be honest, it's a, it's a war zone. <laughs> um, so, we're absolutely getting there with Horace Harris now. So, let's do a bit of a side by side as to what we've actually painted. So, we've seen him put him in camera angle. All right, there we go. Full tactical squad. Forward a little bit so you can actually see them. So there's a 10 man tactical spot. Here they're done now with the Vexilla and all of whatnot. Uh, there we go. Hey, what's going on here? Some form of explosion of water has occurred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit vigorously doing my brush, I think. There we go. Uh, let's move that out of the way, shall we now? There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Told you it was uncut. <clears throat> right. Tactical squad. Praetor. A rhino. Spartan and a contempt to dreadnought. So that's where we're at with everything. That's so far. That is the heresy. Shall I see if I can get a Ooh, there we go. That bit better. Yeah, so that, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. So obviously I know that I need another unit then. Um, but I have got another line now to do. Oh, she's going to kill me, isn't she? She's, uh, I've got the 10 Terminators, obviously, they're ready to go. Um, I've done two mirrored squads of five so that they can, I don't know, so I can use them in, as one unit if I want to. Um, obviously, eventually I'll pick up Justerin because the Justerin are just badass. Um, but the Terminators, the idea is obviously the Terminators are going to go in, the, uh, in this boy, which is great, you know. Um, there we go. So that's my progress so far on the uh, the good old Sons of Horus. So thank you for watching, guys, as always. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I will be back next Sunday for another hour of relaxation and painting. Check out the Instagram, uh, Tom's Bunker, you can't miss this, where I'll post photos of the uh, the completed creator now that he's done and photos on there already of the things like the rhinos and stuff like that. And let me know what you think. So as always, stay safe, stay well. And happy hobbying, guys. Take care.